Ah, so serene. So absolutely serene. We're here on Stewart Bay on the Tasman Peninsula, the former penal colony of Port Arthur close by here. For the next four days, we're going to immerse ourselves in nature with a group of like-minded nature lovers. We're about to go trekking, trekking with a nature-based trekking group, Park Trek, to the three capes here on the Tasman Peninsula. Let's go. We're off on our first day's walk. We're off to Crescent Bay, and the capes are all around us. Cape Rail over here. This is a truly exhilarating part of the Tasmanian coastline. These groups are deliberately kept small. We're joining one such small group today to take in some truly awe-inspiring landscapes. Tracking ever so close to the coastline and leading us to guides with a wealth of local knowledge and experience. Rose Johnson. So we want to show the highlights of the three capes. Cape Rao and Cape Hoy are one of the most spectacular scenery you'll ever see in Tasmania. And Lorinda Hallett. We're getting people out in nature, experiencing the wildlife, the bird life and the beautiful scenery as you can see here. One standout feature of this beautiful coastline are the rock cliff faces, comprised of a sub-volcanic rock known as Dolorite, Tasmania's most famous rock, which makes up most of Tasmania's eastern coastline. That coastline is broken up by glorious sandy beaches. Rose is leading me into Crescent Bay, marked by turquoise waters and soft sands. Fancy a dip, Rose? It's a little bit nippy, but it's uh, really refreshing after that walk we've just done. One of our trekking group is Janelle Patterson. Here on your first park trek trip. First park trek trip, yes. How's it going? So far, wonderful. The people are beautiful and everyone's got very like-minded, obviously, and really enjoying and embracing all the moments. So like-minded, like-minded in what way? Ecology, in nature? Ecology, nature, just concern, care for what, what we're standing on now, the country we're standing on. Yeah, definitely recommend it for all ages, for all people, absolutely. Later, we explore another geological marvel further back along the coast. A truly remarkable cave. This is Remarkable Cave. That's what they've named it. And what's happened here is that you've got these strong southwesterly winds. They've created these big waves that have pounded the Dolorite Cliffs and have created all these caves and fissures, big caves like this, right through to the sea. Also this day, rock formations of another kind. Fascinating geological formation. This is known as the tessellated pavement, formed some 300 million years ago. It got perfectly straight lines this direction and that direction. Amazing. As the earth moved, the cracks formed and it gave this grid-like appearance. As the water comes over this area, the salt gets into the cracks and it starts pushing the rocks further and further apart. So it'll always be growing bigger and bigger. The tessellated pavement, ending our first day on the Tasman Peninsula. Righto. <laughs> Beautiful, sandy Fortescue Bay. Starting point for day two, we're going to trek some 10 k's through to Cape Hoy. First steps into today's trek, and already we're encountering wildlife. Now this wallaby here, we've got a number of these wallabies here, what have we got? A Bennett's wallaby. They live all over Tasmania actually, and if you're from the mainland, they're yes. called a swamp wallaby. Basically the same thing, but they change it a little bit in Tasmania because they like to be different. Then we're trekking in earnest. 
water to the left of us here. Yes, that's yeah, correct. Great views as we walk. And we're starting to climb. A lot of steps here. Yes, lots of steps. <laughs> that's punishing. You can do it. Lots and lots of steps. Yes. Up. And down. And then coming back down. And then up. <laughs> Lorinda, you're going to kill us. You'll be all right. We'll get fit. We will. <laughs> Next feature, the abalone sculptures. Yeah, it's done by a local artist by Alex Miles. And it signifies the shellfish that was harvested by the Aboriginal people in this area, the Oyster Bay tribe. Soil of the ocean, spirit of the land. Yeah, perfect. Then onto our first lookout, breathtaking. Other cliffs here. Now, what have we got here? So that's still all dolerite cliff. Yes. Just with a uh, natural shrub area, as you can see. And we're going to hike all the way out to that furthest point out there. You can see the track that we're going to follow. Yes. More stairs. You'll be all right. So Cape Hoy. Yes. Is an impressive trek. What about you? What sort of what sort of uh, buzz do you get out of coming here? I just, every time I notice something different, like yes. nature is wonderful, either different flowers are flowering or different bird life, even different wildlife we see, different people we interact with, mm. always something different is happening. Another hour of solid trekking and we reach our high point, the summit of Cape Hoy. When you look down, when you look right down, yep. that is a pretty precipitous uh, drop there. It is, it is. These are the largest sea cliffs coming out of the ocean. And what a view. It's beautiful. A change of pace after all that trekking, a glimpse of the area's convict history. Well, here in Port Arthur, we're staying ever so close to this, the historic Port Arthur Penal Colony, 12,500 prisoners passed through this, the most brutal, the most brutal of penal colonies in the British colony between 1830 and the time it closed, 1877. Many of Australia's early convicts were housed in this cold, isolated hellhole. Some prisoners as young as nine. This is the best kept of all Australia's former penal colonies, with many of the original buildings still standing. As for reputation, Port Arthur matches Alcatraz as being unescapable. Right next door are our own comfortable cabins, nestled in the trees and overlooking Stewart's Bay. Day's End Snacks provides the opportunity to talk more to our fellow trekkers. It's really been fabulous. <laughs> now why? I just love being out in the, out in the nature and particularly near the ocean and just to walk and walk and just be peaceful. This walk's great scenery and uh, to borrow a few words, <laughs> uh, it's just brilliant. The, the actual scenery and everything has just made it all wor very worthwhile. Very worthwhile as well on these park trek trips are meal times. A chance for everyone to fill their plates with healthy offerings and gather around the dining table to share their stories. Such wonderful camaraderie. Day three. We're heading out to Cape Raoul, 18 kilometres, 18 k's out to one of the other great three capes. It's been very sunny these last two glorious days. A little bit of rain threatening today. See how we go. This trekking day is our longest yet, and also, as we're very soon to discover, our moodiest. Some heavy mist settles down on us, giving the rainforest an ethereal aura. Will our promised views be clouded in? What is visible, though, is a giant chair. What have we got? We've got the big chair, eh? We do. <laughs> so it is certainly a monster-sized chair, and the idea is to, what, a resting place? For... A, yep, a resting place halfway up the hill to the lookout. Mm. 
Meanwhile, Rose is busy with her passion, photographing fungus and moss in this rainforest. Fungus is a very big passion of mine. I love fungi, fungi very much, um, so I take a lot of fungi pictures. So we're seeing the enormity of uh, your photographic collection. You have been uh, taking these photographs for years, so many treks, I would imagine. Yeah, I've done a lot of really good treks around Tasmania, so uh, there's a lot of fungi, uh, so many varieties of fungi around Tasmania. So as a guy, I get to go all the way around Tassie to see those fungi. Another hour of steady walking brings us to a lookout. And as if on cue, the clouds clear. So, Lorinda, we have dropped a couple of hundred feet from that cloud-covered misty top up there. Now the view has opened up. It has. I told you the clouds may clear. We were lucky. And we can hear the surf. We can hear the surf. You can see the waves crashing down there. So we've heard the surf for some time. We haven't been able to see anything until this very second. Exactly. Alrighty, pressing on. Yet another hour on this cliffside track brings us to our destination. <laughs> A morning of walking to these dolerite cliffs. This is Cape Raoul. So we've walked all morning, showers to start with, they've cleared now, and we've got this beautiful view in front of us. Dolerite cliffs extending right down into the ocean. And so this cape, Cape Raoul, yes. one of the three capes, this is, this has been quite a walk today. It has been quite a walk down through the she oak forest. And the view is the reward. The view is stunning. The stunning coastal seascapes of Cape Raoul. Trekkers, you've nailed it. Hey!